You do the best you can, but you know what? When I was writing this book, one of the quotes I picked up from Joan Robinson, which is the a great female economist of the 20th century, she said, the point of studying economics is not to get ready-made answers, but it's to avoid being deceived by economists. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do, do we go, let's go down the list of some of what, of, of the way you've thought about some of the modern questions yeah. relating to some of the uh, historical famous mm -hmm. economists. I want to start with this one because it's the country we talk about all the time. Can China become rich is the question. Uh, how would Karl Marx answer that question? He would say no until they became truly communist. <laughs> So basically, China is a communist country politically, but they've obviously grown very well because they've injected market forces. And so right. Karl Marx would say, you've deviated from the principles. If you truly want to get to the end point of prosperity, you're going to have to look at communal principles once again, equality, stability, all of that. But to be honest, Karl Marx wouldn't recognize China today. I mean, the economy is so capitalist in some respects, he would literally be probably turning in his grave. Is inevitability, is in, inequality inevitable? This is an Alfred Marshall question. At least it that's is. How you po that, that's how you <laughs> positioned it. Uh, the answer is yes, but governments can do something about it. So in a capitalist system, you are always going to have people who do better than others. So right. for instance, we are now in the digital age. Those who know how to innovate in this age will do better than those who used to work in manufacturing. But Alfred Marshall was a late Victorian, so he believed in helping the deserved poor. Right. And so you have to think about it's a political choice. Once you know you're going to have income inequality, do you do something about it? And importantly, how much you do. It's not an right. economics question, it's actually you a political know, it, choice. It, when we always talk about it, it's not a real Nobel Prize. It's sort of given by a different society, right? It's not, it's given by a kind of, thank God though, because Karl Marx uh, would have gotten one, probably. probably. And, the, in, therein lies some of the rub, I think, in that a guy like Karl Marx could win and a guy like Milton Friedman can win. And they, they are diametrically opposed on every issue and they can both win a Nobel Prize. So yeah. where's the real truth? Where's the objective truth in economics when, when Stiglitz can win? And, and, you know, who's one, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, but somebody else on the other side. On the other yeah. side recently. Or Paul Krugman can win. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I think this is why... Oh, someone like that. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, I think it's absolutely fascinating how economic thinking ideas come into vogue. So each of the people that you mentioned, you're right. Their ideas are not only on a different side in terms of ideology. Some of them were proved wrong later on. Right. And so I think what you see, and I found this looking at 200 years of economic history, is that you have periods where some ideas gain a lot of popular support, and it seems to be transforming the world. And that's why they get a, you know, that, that, that still argue that that Marx was right. It's just that it hasn't been implemented correctly. Yeah. In, in, in Do you think the, any of them would have changed like their China. views though yeah. by now? Meaning, if Milton Freud, uh, uh, Friedman was around, how mm -hmm. he would think about today? Would he think about today any differently than he did? before he passed. I think he was pretty sure that his <laughs> views were, no, I just, were right. It's easy to be everyone... sure when you're, when you're right. <laughs> yeah. If there ever was anyone who was objectively right in. Yeah. So he had very strong libertarian views, but right. I think he would look at today, because obviously his main work was that he explained the Great Depression. It wasn't like any of the causes anybody else said. He showed it was because there was a contraction in the money supply. The Great Contraction in the 1930s um, actually caused the crash of 29, and then caused the economy to go into well, Great Depression. Need, so he need, would look at today and say central banks are doing the right thing. I can go back further. Do, after Adam Smith, do we need to read anything? I mean, didn't That's we figure really it out in 1776 <laughs> sure book. Yeah, did we figure it out in 1776 or whatever it was? That's exactly when he published it. That you're you're absolutely right. So many of the ideas in Adam Smith are still with us today. The invisible hand, how um, supply and demand determine prices See, and the, quantity, trade. He yeah, talked about those are the objective know. truths that I think do exist in economics, and all this other stuff is is at the margin. Yeah, I think the the fundamental economic principles have yeah. been around for a long time well, and that's I think should be required the... reading for millennials Linda so that we don't think uh, you know that socialism might work if you do it right hey there thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories you can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC thanks for watching